so we'll we'll talk about the monster scenario, but we may as well now that we're talking about the the tens talk about um, Healy and the emergence of Healy and how quickly that's happened. I think it's n- somebody said it's either nine or eleven games that he's played uh, in at, at this level um, in his career, and yet because of the situation we find ourselves in, he's right there when it comes to how we are thinking about um, who should be the number two to Sexton. And by the end of the Six Nations, who knows? So that, that's a long period of time. There's a lot of rugby to be played. Um, do we baby Healy into the Ireland squad? Do we stick him straight into the Ireland squad when he's not even already the established number 10 for Munster? How do we, how do we deal with these in a way that's long-term thinking and short-term thinking at the same time because Healy well, what's long-term is, he, is, is Ben Healy likely to be in the 33-man squad for Rugby World Cup I think we've, you've got to work backwards and all coaches have to, to, to do that we're two years out from Rugby World Cup so there's a huge amount of development can happen in that time and I guess it's it's it, as you don't want to be dramatic because players can always limp in, you know, just in the rounds beforehand. But ultimately, you don't want that happening in key positions. No, it happened with Connor Murray in two thousand and eleven that he got into the the squad, having just been capped in the warm up games. But they're unusual circumstances. He's played for his provincial team. He's shown this huge consistency of performance and confidence. And but whereas you look at all of the other tens. They've gone very well for a period of time and then there's something, there's a stumbling. And and it just, it creates an uncertainty in all of our minds and no doubt in Andy Farrell and the coaching staff, my cat, they, they must be thinking, gosh, oh, well, we've got to stay with Johnny. We've got to go there because it's hard. They, they're still thinking short-term victories to make sure they're still in a gig in two years time but ultimately they've got to start working backwards from World Cup to now to go right what does my squad makeup look like if I'm picking from a full deck and is Ben Healy part of that maybe so I've got to look at trying to introduce him into the fold soon it's it's 50-50 whether or not he's going to be there yeah like, like it's very hard to tell two years out you, you would know? have said it was a, he's got a 10% chance of making it this time last year but now I actually think that so let, let's th- there's going to be three outhouse in that squad right? yeah I think you're going to have to pick three I do yeah and so Carberry's more than likely going to be one and Sexton's going to be one and then after that the two Burns are a runner Sorry, the three Burns, Billy Burns, but I'm not mm. sure if anybody's ever going to forgive the missed kick to touch. I think I, I, I'm not worried about that. I think that happens, right? I, that it's an, that's that was one incident. I think there's other parts to his game that would concern me. There, irrespective of that kick to the okay. corner, those things happen, right? Fair enough. I, I, there was other aspects to the, the to that ten minute sequence that were more concerning than one kick to the corner. So I guess I'm using that as an example. Yeah, but um, but I, I I think good players are able to grow their way. Out Fair enough. Out of we haven't seen episodes. that sign yet, though. That he's he's reached a point where he's able to dominate games or he's able to influence games enough that he should be in the World Cup squad. No, I don't think he's shown that. Um, I think again, consistency of performance is all well and good being a consistent performer at. URC level or even European level but it's just such a huge step up to international and that's why so many players fall by the wayside you know where they've shown great potential at provincial level but because of some shortcoming in one aspect of their game it gets exposed and um, and they're not able to deal with that you know rise in tempo the speed the less less time on the ball and they go into themselves and they're they're not the same player. And that's why when you do get 80, 90, 100 cap players, particularly in pivotal positions, they've earned it. Yeah. You know, you don't fluke your way to 100 test matches in a in a halfback jersey. No. Uh, so, Carty doesn't seem to be in the mix anymore. I don't think he's in the mix. You know, I talked last year that he... he Probably I'd like deserved an opportunity, but it didn't come. It didn't come, but also uh, there's something missing there too. I I think he shows potential. I don't know if he has. See, you have to remember too. Even when Johnny Sexton does retire, 
but he's not retired yet. It, it's, it's a poison chalice to come in and take that over. You know, he had an unenviable task to come in and take over from Ron O'Gara and, he, and he's, he's excelled. But a player to come in looking on the basis of all of the quality that is available now, it's a, it's a poison chalice because I don't know if any of them can elevate their performances higher than what he's achieved, which is... But it's a very high level. It is a very high we, level. We take for granted He's a, a once-in-a-generation player. Yeah, yeah. And a World Player of the Year and a Grand Slam winner twice and no once. Uh, three, four hundred cups. Like, it's a sensational level of, of um, achievement. But that gets us to gets us very quickly to Carberry and Healy. And it's like, let's see him now. Yeah, well, like the thing is, Johan van Graan's not worried about the World Cup, right? He's worried about his job, about his job, and he's in the final year of his contract, and he's going to pick the personnel that he feels can get the job done. And Ben Healy got a a go against Scarlets at the weekend and did very well. It was I, a lot was made of the very poor Scarlets, but I thought Munster were really good. They were incredibly organised. They evolve, have really evolved their game plan. Some of their younger players coming through. There was lovely. There was a lot of thought put into their performance. Um, the balance of their kicking game versus trying to get the ball wide to their fast men. Their offloading. I, I really thought. I was impressed. It's the first time that I thought that second level of players have really stepped up. And we've associated that with Leinster over the course of the last three or four years. That it doesn't really matter the personnel that come in. They yeah. do a job. It felt for the first time that there was a version of that with Munster with O'Sullivan at eight, with Liam Coombs, with Nash, um, with all these guys you know, breaking through. Because you always felt that actually that was the big gap in, in Munster's squad. And we, let's come back to that in a minute because I just want to finish because we didn't talk Ross Byrne and Harry Byrne. Harry Byrne were dying to see him play a sustained period of time at 10, but there's just been an injury issue at various stages. And they're, they're, not, they're not huge injuries, but there's just a, a profile there over the last 12 months where the opportunity is presenting itself and for whatever reason it's a back strain or a calf strain or whatever. Yeah, you've got to be careful not to be that guy too. And that's, th that can be good fortune, um, can be unlucky. Um, I'm, and I'm not saying it in his case, it, it can be a, sometimes with some players it can be dig in a bit more and you've got to ride it out. And he's had a couple of unlucky ones and you, there's nothing you can do about soft tissue. He got a hip pointer at the weekend, very debilitating as well. So different players get their opportunities different ways. And all of a sudden, Ben Healy catapults past them. Absolutely. And you, you know, you've you've someone hyped for ages, and then for one reason or another, they're not able to deliver. And then someone comes through the unsuspecting, and they take their chance, be it at a club level, and then and you sink or swim at international. You go well or you don't and you get the jersey again and you hold on to it or you don't. And, and it's that simple. I suppose that's the long-term question, right? Because Healy's really young and if you put him in now and he doesn't swim immediately, is there a possibility that you slow things down? Well, I think you've got to understand the, the personality there as well. I don't know Ben Healy, but I understand that he's a very confident guy. And so maybe that sways your judgment that you go okay maybe he has the durability and mental toughness to be able to ride out a, a disappointing performance i would i would say from from my understanding of of harry byrne as well he's kind of a similar mindset he backs himself massively so it's just a case of these guys getting a proper opportunity um but you got to decide which you know which of those is the better option yeah. right now you look at the kicking game of ben healy you know, is that a game that you're that you need your out half to to be playing? He's got a superior kicking game, no doubt. Harry Burns undoubtedly got a better running game. Both quite nice passers of the ball. Healy's a nice passer of the ball. Doesn't take it to the line quite the same way. So I don't think he's going to attract um, defenses in and create space out wide to the same degree. But he's got good range of passing. So there's lots of there's there's different qualities with, with these different players I guess it's what you're looking for if you're Andy Farrell I think too and and we've seen with a bunch of different players some people really take to international rugby like Jacob Stockdale immediately into the team and all of a sudden look, looked incredible uh, other people have come in in a similar position and struggled a little bit to reproduce their club form now Stockdale's form has come off a little bit so maybe he's not the best example for the long term but some some people have that temperament straight away and that would be the 
argument for experimenting with both of them over the next 12 months if Andy Farrell was in any way confident that his job is safe all the way through to the World Cup. If somebody comes and says, your job is safe to the World Cup, you need to make sure you've got the best out halves and uh, give them both game time in the Six Nations. What do you do with your, your captain? So Johnny Sexton's captain of the Irish team as well. Do you say to him, you're going to the World Cup now? I know that you're, you've told everybody that it's only one year, but we're going to make a, a Faustian pact. We're going to make it all the way to the World Cup and you're going to have a key role. You're not allowed to play in internationals for the next year. Not, not, not that you're not going to play. That is... How about he's on the bench? And horrible to hear from, I don't care who you are. How if, about you're, if, you, if you still feel as though you're the best option or one of the best options, it, it would still be a bitter pill to swallow from... Any for the good of the team. Listen, he'll do it. He, I think he will do it, but I don't think you can. For the balance and and but also how how dominant a character Johnny is in in camp. Can he be on the bench and the lads start game on game no, off? No, I think he or can. He I, th- I think he can. Yeah, I think because he's got to be a realist as well in saying, I, I can't. If Andy Farrell goes and says, Johnny, I can't put all my eggs into your basket. I just can't. He, he's he's a smart guy. He'll yeah. realize that's. That's a, that's a clever move. So from that point of view, provided he's involved, provided he's not shelved for a period of time, because he'll also want to stay sharp yeah, at that yeah. international level. So, so you're going to have to drip, you know, you're going to have to split up. There's a compromise. Things. Yeah, there is a compromise. And I listen, I said it on the, on, the, on the show a couple of weeks ago. You need to see more Joey Carberry or whoever else is the other 10 option. That's not to say that Johnny's not still number one, but we have to. See, we know he's number giving, one is yeah, the problem. And then unless we help the competition. But the problem is, in the short term then, Andy Farrell's not getting the best out of his team yeah. because he's not picking the best players, which yeah. is a really hard thing to do from a coaching perspective to give game time. So I think you'll see, you might still see, you'll see, still see Johnny so he's starting, starting the for the All Black game, game yeah, yeah. And maybe you'll see the, the others involved starting the other games. Okay, and that would be acceptable. I think that's fair, yeah. I think that's fair. I don't think you can be putting out a below full strength team against the All Blacks we, we can never offer that luxury no no and and uh, but for the Argentina game if if any of those other out halves started it'd be exciting yeah yeah it would be um, so long as the team outside them and inside them is uh, it's not just it's, listen it's just just them but yeah it is exciting and I think it's a it's the reality of where we need to be. So, and everyone knows that, including the coaching staff. So it's kind of low key, but the number nine position is a fairly similar scenario. Yeah, like, it has gone under the radar a lot more because of the age profile. Conor Murray's a lot younger than Johnny Sexton, but yet, what's going to happen there? Yeah, Conor Murray, good and good and um, not bad during the um, Lions tour, but maybe showed signs of some of that form of three years ago but then not consistently at it so yeah there's there's definitely scope for um, a shake up in there and, but yet it feels as though Conor Murray's still very much a 23 um, squad man yeah. um, right now um, you know what you're getting there and there's a comfort that comes with him but I, I do feel as though there's, there's opportunities to be had yeah and let's let's see again. It's um, a friend of mine always talks about the it, the young kids are always better because we haven't seen them. It's like the Andy Reid, Wes Hoolan impact. It's like oh, he's not there. The team would be perfect if we had this player. But young Doak looks like somebody who could uh, potentially step up at some point in the future as well. So again, maybe they're just players you kind of ease in over the next years. And in five years' time, we're going to have Doak and Healy, and we'll be like, wow, that's amazing. And Casey can't get in the team. We'll see. Um, you mentioned there the strength that the Munster team showed against Scarlets, and they're obviously going to need to draw on all of that because of what happened with RG Snyman. So it's a horrific situation for him as an individual, and it's a horrific situation for Munster because the level of excitement when they announced that this was happening, it happened, the announcement essentially came out six months before it happened. Then it happened, huge excitement. He gets picked, he gets injured he's out for the year comes back and it's there's a bit of an issue and then comes back again and immediately looks like he's back he's kind of you know Godzilla swatting people away and immediately he's gone again so it's two and a half years of hype and excitement punctured in the most horrible way yeah it's it's hugely deflating from their perspective but from a rugby perspective and and you you really have to feel for the individual as much as you do feel for 
for Munster because it it it, it did feel as though this was one of the missing pieces, um, and you, and we got a we got a flavour of what Damien De Allende offered last year, and he was brilliant for them. And sometimes with your overseas players, particularly when they're still playing international, that maybe you know they dip in and out and. They've, or they've, they bring back knocks from international duty. Now, Dillande didn't play a lot of international, or didn't play any international last year, and that's why we got so much of him. But he was brilliant. And he was darky, and he bought into the Munster thing, and he totally. was right in the faces of the Leinster lads. It was great. It was and exactly just, what they need. I just think Orgy Snyman's athleticism to go with the nasty edge of other components in there, uh, Jack O'Donoghue, these guys that just have a bit of an edge piece, just to have that skill set in there and and just a, a monster ball carrier, but also someone that could evolve their game. You see him, you know, with the basketball passes and those octopus arms. Like, he just, it felt as though it was going to be that next elevation to get from semi-final finals to trophy yeah. capabilities. And to not get, to not have him for two of his two-year contract. And... It'll be, it'll be really interesting to see what comes of this now because something similar happened to Marcel Coetzee up in Ulster. He had two near back-to-back season-long injuries and then in his third season had a great year. I think he might have been player of the, of the uh, club player of the year um, last season and then moved on. You, you'd have to anticipate that you'll get more out of it, Orgy Snyman, that it won't be two and gone because players do feel... A responsibility and an onus to offer something back to the club that have come and and taken not a punt on them, but but paid good money and yeah. and then and for the player not to have delivered. So even if he thought two and head home or two in Japan, I think now there's a strong likelihood that he'll want to deliver for that fan base. And you know he would have he got a cup some rapturous applause. Uh, he had already a couple of times did he come on? He, he's the yeah. he's the potential to be. A, a cult hero, yeah. Um, in in this setup, so he'll. It does feel as though hopefully the second one won't take as long to fix. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about ACLs really, but I, I I'd anticipate, provided he's able to come back fully fit, that you will see a, a contract extension beyond these two years. Well, fingers crossed for that, and, and that he gets back. In in terms of the monster change of style of play what impact does not having him does it suddenly take them from being a team that you thought would reach the semi-finals almost guaranteed of the competitions they're in to a team who are going to have a hairy enough time now making the quarterfinals uh, or or progressing in, in Europe Like I think there is the potential for it for him to be that big a loss I do it, it does feel like he's a big piece of the jigsaw that that is missing Rocky Elsom style impact. Yeah, like he, he, the athleticism. We saw those videos of him in Japan. Like when he's in the open field, he looks like Ryan Baird. He looks so comfortable, yeah. you know, ball in hand, agility. For a guy 6'9", he's quick. He's. When you think about it, like. Yeah, he's, yeah. you know, he, he looks to keep the ball alive. He doesn't want to die with it. He smashes people. He's got a big work rate. Um, like. Oh, he's such a loss. He really is. And, and Grant must be thinking, oh, I just cannot buy a break. He must be sick. If he'd he had really him, must be sick. If he'd had him to Christmas, he'd probably have a new deal. Yeah. And now it's like, well, we're going to wait and see. Let's just wait and see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it'll be interesting to see now what what centre pairing, or sorry, what second row pairing they do go with. You know, it's there was talk all of a sudden with Jenkins, you know, fit... Where's Tyke Byrne going to fit into all of this? You know, is he the, is he a starter with RG? Now you don't have that that issue as to where you you because the, you look at the Munster back row as well and the quality that are coming through and guys putting their hands up. It there's a, it's a really competitive environment for the first time in a long time, um, where where kind of eight go into five positions in the back in in that back five. So um, now all of a sudden you've lost one of the key components of that so it's who's going to partner with Ty Byrne is it going to be Jenkins is it going to be Ahern um, for me there's a actually a bit of a case emerging to keep Van Graan for the the sake of continuity where the team has built up to this point and I know it's a double edged sword and you, you know he's had plenty of time and we should have seen more progress by now but 
if you blow it up and you get a coach who comes in and changes things and wants mm. to play a different style of play back a couple of years like, takes you a while to build that again very hard for a new coach to come in unless it's somebody um, from within the system unless it's from someone within the system be it Larkham or, or Rantree that comes in and just evolves what they're already doing and has a serious th- a, simp- um, a similar theory as to how the game plan should should look um, it does feel as though they maybe should stick but also on, on the basis of what we've seen so far is it three try bonuses um, yeah they're playing great <laughs> yeah they are like, they're that's playing the really well and, it's like, but they're, it's the thought as well you know, there was a really beautiful 50-22 from a scrum uh, just inside their own half where they did a sweep they manipulated the backfield pulling the the um, open winger up because there was a running threat and then kicked it in behind now the execution was a 60 metre kick from Healy it was more like a 70-22 than a 50-22 yeah. and it was magnificent but it was what they were trying to do and that's the first time that I think they've really I've seen them thinking their way around strategising what, what they want to do in the game 